Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Amy. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how you can make a business with your homemade product. So if you have something that you make and you really wanna turn it into a business this year, this video is for you. I'm gonna be going over in a three-part video series, things that you need to do to start your business, legal, website, things like that. Next video is gonna cover marketing. And then after that, we're gonna talk about how you can buy the products you need at the best possible price to maximize your profits. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do when you're making your homemade business is you have to decide what you're going to sell. Now, some of you, this is really easy and you're like, I've got it, I know what I'm gonna sell and that's fantastic. But if you don't know what you're gonna sell right away, you just know that you want to do a business with your homemade product, that's fantastic too, you're fine. Just think for a minute and ponder for a while about a couple of things. One, what is it that you're good at? Because if you are good at, you wanna make sure that you're good at it because you're gonna be doing it a lot. Second thing you need to consider no matter what it is, is what the profit margin is in it. So let's just say you really enjoy making something, but there's not a lot of profit in it. Keep thinking of what else you enjoy because you want to have something that you enjoy that also makes you a decent amount of profit margin. And then on top of that, you want to consider what the competition is. Is there already a lot of people in that market selling what you're trying to sell? And if that's the case, you can still enter that market by all means, but just know you have more of an uphill battle, an uphill climb, if you will, because you have to then compete against people that are already established as a business. So you can do that by making a quick Google search, things like that, just to take a kind of a survey, this, the environment of what you're looking to sell to see what is already out there being sold. Once you know what you're going to sell, the next thing you need to do is you need to name your business, which if you ask me, this can be a rather tricky thing because there's a lot of things you need to consider when naming your business. And just to give you an example on that, let's just say you decide right now that you wanna sell candles. So I wanna say, I wanna create a candle company and I'm gonna name it Amy's Candles. Well, that's a good name. It tells you what I'm making and it's very you know, easy to remember, things like that. But what if down the road as a business, I decide I wanna now add home decor items in with my candles. So I'm more of a home business, if you will. Candles are my main thing, but I'm also selling home decor. I could do that, but at that point, I mean, I'm, I've named my company Amy's Candles. So you're gonna find me if you're looking for candles, but are you gonna find me if you're looking for pillows or anything else home decor that I later decide to add on to my business. I very much limited myself in my terms of my business growth with the name of just Amy's Candles. So maybe instead of Amy's Candles, you know, you could do something more specific like Sense and More or Home Decor and More or just things like that, that you can just be more broad with your name. Not so broad that people don't know who you are and what you sell, but give yourself room to grow as a business because you don't know what your interests are gonna do, what your business is gonna do a few years from now. Once you have a name you think you like, run it past friends and family. And the reason is this, they might think and associate it with something that never crossed your mind, but you might not wanna be associated with that. So make sure you get other people's opinion, bounce it off of multiple people to see what they like, get their feedback and things like that. Once you have done that, check the name on social media. So check on Instagram, check on Facebook, check on um, Etsy, things like that. See if the name is available. So if you were to try to set up a shop on Etsy, if you were to try to set up um, like an Instagram account, can you? Or is that name already taken? Email address, make sure the email address can be also secured with your business name of some kind so that people can find you because chances are you're going to want to create a business email for your customers to reach you. Also, while you're checking to see if things are available with the name, check your um, domain website name to see if that's available. And you can do that by going to like godaddy.com or one of those sites and see if you were to search in the name of whatever you want for a website, that it's available and replicable to your company. There were so many names that I thought, oh, I really like this, but the website was taken. And I wanted to be able to have the option to have a website, most companies do. So that is very, very important. And even if you are starting your business, but you're like, I don't want a website now, I'll deal with that in the future. Still check the domain, still go ahead and see, get one that's available and lock the domain down. And by lock the domain down, all I mean is go ahead and pay for it. You can pay for a couple of years upfront. It's not very expensive. And they will hold that domain, that name, website name available for you. So that if your business grows three years from now, you can then create a website and someone hasn't taken it in those few years. So that's important. Even if it's not now, think long-term for your business. Once you have all of that done, you want to get your stuff legal, obviously. So 
the way I have done it, and it's worked for me, is I used LegalZoom. Um, again, I'm not affiliated with them. I'm not a lawyer. This is just my experience. Please do your own research. This is just my opinion. Um, I used LegalZoom and went through there. I let them handle the paperwork just so I made sure everything was good and that I hadn't missed anything. They'll ask you what state you're in and what kind of business, all that stuff. So that I would recommend doing something like that because they're gonna make sure that you're good with the state that you're in. Um, the next thing you wanna do with all of that jazz is you also want to get a bank account that is for your business. So you have to go, like, go through LegalZoom, they'll send you the paperwork. Once you have the paperwork, you can do, um, you can get an EIN number, which is gonna do with your taxes and all of that jazz. Once you have your EIN number, you can create your business bank account and I would also recommend keeping all of your expenditures for your business in one place, whether that's you know charging it through like one credit card, keep the receipts, all that good stuff, and make sure that you have all your ducks in a row legal. So that is gonna be what my takeaway for this video is. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you have questions, please be sure to drop them below. I'm happy to help. Thank you for watching.